Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. Mark Curtis here this Sunday as we continue to dissect the election. Joining us now are two reporters who cover the Capitol and the political process here in West Virginia. Jake Suckerman from the Charleston Gazette Mail. Or is it the West Virginia Gazette Mail? The Charleston Gazette Mail. Charleston Gazette Mail. I was changed and merged and all that stuff. And Brad McElhenney from uh, Metro News Radio. Anyway, we're going to get some perspective on the elections. What's the big headline, Jake? Big headline's got to be Joe Manchin winning re-election, taking down Patrick Morrissey. You know, I, I can't disagree, although all the way down the ballot there were important issues. Uh, two constitutional amendments, two separate Supreme Court races decided after this year of controversy we've had in West Virginia. And turnout itself, the voters uh, came out for a midterm election with great enthusiasm. Yeah, I was always worried that whenever you have a long ballot, you think people are going to vote the top tier races and say, ah, the heck with the rest of this. And I'd remind folks, you know, city council and mayor of Charleston, the amendments as you talked about near the end of the ballot. Um, so, you know, that stuff is important even though it gets less attention than the, than the Senate race. Why did Manchin win do you think? Comes down to a lot of things but I think that he's just been here so long and he's just built up such a secure brand. People are comfortable with Joe Manchin and you look at some of the House congressional candidates and the Republicans really just clobbered the Democrats there but a lot of people who voted for Joe Manchin mathematically must have voted for these Republicans so Joe just People trust him. People call him Joe. No one calls him Senator Manchin. I mean, yeah. he's Joe here. It, and he barely won. I mean, this was his lowest margin of victory in six statewide races. He barely won. He didn't crack 50% of the vote. I mean, how much of that is his, his gift of retail politics, Brad? Oh, enormous. And can it be replicated by anybody on the Democratic side in future years? Uh, you know, it, and who else could have withstood the repeated visits by a very popular President Trump, uh, the advertisements that invoke President Trump's name, his words, uh, and the broader Trump family? It was not just Joe Manchin against Patrick Morrissey. There were many other factors involved, and only someone with that kind of reputation and the relationships, I think, could have withstood it. Yeah, some of those Trump ads were fascinating. It was all Donald Trump for like 29 seconds of the ad, and then you saw Patrick Morrissey flash up for one second. This was really a Trump referendum race, wasn't it? He said it verbatim in the ads, a vote for Patrick Morrissey is a vote for me. A vote for Morrissey is a vote for me. I mean, you can't be any clearer than that. You know, it was interesting. I went to the three Trump rallies and the Pence rally as well, and it became very obvious early on that they were, the purpose of the rallies was not to rally the base and get, you know, 20,000 people in the Civic Center. The purpose of the rally was to shoot TV commercials for the candidate. It was, and also, you know, you fill out a little form to go to those rallies, and among the, the fields on the form is your email address and suddenly they've got all kinds of information to push your way. Uh, it operated on multiple levels. Yeah, we want to talk about uh, races beyond just the Manchin-Morrissey race. So many people thought Richard Ojeda had it in the bag in the 3rd District. He's gotten a lot of airtime nationally and locally. Uh, what happened to Richard Ojeda? Uh, and he was beaten decisively mm -hmm. by Carol Miller. Well, that's the mystery, and you look at some of the polling. You know, up just a few weeks before the election, he was polling within the margin of error. He got beat by about 12, 13 points, so it could come to a lot of things. It could come to Donald Trump Trump's support of Carol Miller, and I'd say sustained support, support of Carol Miller. Then also, you know, he really, he ran as a fighter, and even through his concession speech, if you saw it, you know, he said, I would have won this race if it wasn't for Donald Trump, and you really saw that, that bare-knuckled style. Maybe people just wanted a more subdued candidate, which I think is what we found in Carroll. There was the fascinating moment in Wheeling when President Trump said this, you're referring to a jet, said this guy's a wacko, he's stone cold crazy, and that got incorporated into the ads, and then, you know, Ojeda responded in kind. Uh, Ojeda was a fighter, was a populist, was extremely enthusiastic, filled with energy, but that's potentially the downside of that, is people think you've gone too far. They, they wonder, you know, what you're all about. I, I found it hard to predict that race just because he was beating the bushes so hard and seemed to have such a grassroots presence, I wasn't sure if uh, traditional mindsets about politics or polling could even anticipate what would happen. Uh, you know, it concerns me and may concern the rest of you that, that one lesson from this is Carol Miller really with the exception of your interview, didn't engage with the likes of us, uh, didn't seem to be open to responding to questions uh, on behalf of the public, to, to reaching out directly to the public. Um, 
and, and I hate for that to be a lesson to be learned from this kind of race. Yeah, she's very low key. She's not a camera chaser down at the Capitol. Some politicians are, some aren't. She's sometimes reluctant to even go on, on camera with me on things, but she did. Um, you know, the other takeaway I have is there were no debates. I mean, Manchin and Morrissey did that one debate in Morgantown. We invited them. Uh, Manchin turned us down. Morrissey accepted. Really, none of the congressional races. And I think it's important in a democracy we have debates. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it's frustrating as a reporter to try and cover these things. So that's our message to the candidates next time. Two years from now, let's all have debates, okay? And take uh, questions. Yeah, and take questions, questions from reporters. Now, we're going to talk about some of the statewide races and those implications when we come back after this break. So stay with us.